morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. I'm just just holding your ladder for you. Thanks, bum. Anything else you need? Uh, those clip, clip of nails. All right, I can do that too. I got you. Full service. There you go. I don't care what anybody says about you. <laughs> I'll just hold these for you. We're back on site and this morning I'm part of the ground team. So I'm pretty much just running around, taking commands, cutting stuff as fast as I can. This is a hard job being the ground guy. Your, All right, he your, need, Jono needs that and that. It's your penance for being late. <laughs> I was late. Uh, That's your top sheet. That's your 87. Yep. Drop her down. Yep. All right, both of you are good. We're going around and adding these five inch GRK structural screws. I think they're called truss screws, uh, RSS, the rugged structural screws, to some of these bands that are attaching our roof system to the house. So if you add a screw to it, you can see the five inch has full penetration there. But the three inch nail or screw that we had just tacked everything with you can see it doesn't really go into the framing much. So uh, we're going back and adding a bunch of those guys to make sure that the band is really attached to the wall. We're adding some nailers on the bottom side of this piece of two by four that's running the inside of the valley. And the reason I put it in is we ended up with a joint in between mm. the rafters at the heel cut of one of these pieces. And I didn't want the edges to be like flippy floppy. So I thought, let's put that one in while I'm putting that one in. I've already measured the angle. I may as well put two more in. It's really easy to do. What's the cut look like on that next piece? 87 cross cut to start with. It's going to get funky after that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. just finished doing the zip tape on our panels here and as opposed to the upper roof this roof butts into a vertical wall surface it also has a valley so I just wanted to highlight again that using the zip system with the seam sealing tape is much faster and easier than having to like lap your roof underlayments on these valleys or wrap your house wrap over top of your roof underlayment and all that kind of stuff and make it watertight in the framing phase this makes it really quick and easy for us because of this hip roof, we have all these weird cutoffs, weird shapes, like maybe a trapezoid there, a bunch of triangles. And they didn't work. And they didn't work for a lot, but every now and then a piece did. Yeah, and, and when yeah. one worked, you would think Arlo <laughs> just won the lottery. He was like, yes, <laughs> you just hear him screaming. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, man. It's, a, it's an amazing thing when it happens, when it works out. Across the top, let my man get some numbers first here. Jamie's gonna seal up the ridge and he's got the eight inch or six inch wide stretch tape and Ray's taking a video of his hand which is an NP device hand. Jamie's a uh, ambassador for this company and travels all around and you'll see his hand in their literature and magazines and website. That's Jamie's hand. <laughs> God, I'm afraid it's gonna stick to my face. I got you. There it is. Uh oh you're in trouble now. You got it stuck to you. Yeah. This is a real trick here. This is a real trick. Whoa, no! By tomorrow, we'll have this done. Ah. I should have cut a shorter piece, but I, I thought I could do it. There we go. Great, right? Got it back under control now. Uh, it ended up being short on the top. There it is. Nice. Oh, we, we landed it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, we're good. deck number two we got our band going up they got it laid out and i gotta brag on jason all right they're starting to lay it out and the way we had this laid out you had to burn an inch and a half on the layout because the way we're doing this in joyce all the way to the wall and he caught it <laughs> he caught it and i did not it's really nice what you did there just making him think you were recording that part <laughs> it's good for morale i appreciate you doing that is this jamie's bit yeah <laughs> I'll just I'll just do it then. He doesn't know we're using it though. Yeah. 
Just for everyone's edification, the drill we're using here, Jason's using, is a 3 8 drive driver. It's made specifically for putting a chuck on it or a, uh, socket. a, a socket and doing what we're doing, but it's struggling. Dude, it don't like it at all. Um, but So I, I actually thought this was a regular impact when I saw you doing it. And I was Dude, like, there no. would have been flames coming yeah, out of that I was that like, thing. no wonder get a real impact but no this is what it's made for and we got a big old 60b coming down the line with the joists here and one thing we didn't have to do on the floor trusses because they're manufactured they have a top and the bottom is to look at these and crown them these are all crowned up the same direction arlo marked that for us we're getting one intact and i'm coming back and pulling it tight to the band here so we're just cutting them all the same length and hopefully that's going to end up Given a, a straight front girder. We will sight it though, and if it doesn't look straight, we'll just bop that thing till it is straight, even if it gaps these joists by just the fuzz. It doesn't matter, there's a joist hanger going under it later. Never run my drill upside down with my pinky before <laughs> today, <What>? no. <laughs> Checking out our girder, and it looks straight enough to just roll with it. I did bop it out just a little bit, about two thirds of the way. You can see a tiny gap right there. That help you? I bopped it out just to straighten it. So we're wrapping up our uh, joist installation. We are going to add joist hangers to this, just like we did the front. Um, we left it and we're just going to put on some sheet goods for now. We don't have the decking and really we've had bad luck installing finished decking at this stage because then all of the other trades including drywall and paint and everything else go in and out on your finished decking. We've got our two outside posts on here and we're gonna string across the top of them and measure this middle one. We didn't do that on the front and I ended up having to cut like an eighth or three sixteenths off the bottom of a post once it was already stood up. And that's just because our deck girder had a little bit of a hump in it right there. So that was a total pain and we're trying to avoid that here. Don't let that hit me in the face. <laughs> I think you already got black on you. Oh no. Dude, that was still turkey's nice. No, these aren't load bearing. Yeah, these are just faux beams. They're not even real. One day we'll know something. We're just gonna we're just gonna butt into the sheathing and just toe screw. They're just gotta hold their own weight. To you, to you. Yep. I'm good right there, Jono. Real quick, we're gonna show you how Arlo got the measurement for this first Raptor, which is the pattern, without measuring it. All he knew was the, the, floor. the horizontal distance on the yeah. floor, and he knew the pitch, which right. is a 412. So what he's done, and he's gonna sort of use his tape to show me here, right. he's, he marked a 412 at one end, Yep. and then he measured like horizontal across, because right. this is pitched down at yeah, a 412. Let's, let's do it here from there yep. to there is 12. Yep. And then made another 412 and line. And I just went out. Line, line, line. Each, each of those, so each of these spaces represents one foot on the horizontal. Right. He knew it was uh, eight feet. So we did eight of those spaces. And then we knew that our actual length was slightly less than eight feet by like an inch or whatever. Inch and a quarter, yeah. Yep. So we just came back from the eight feet, yep. inch and a quarter and- Cut the bird's mouth. So we don't really know how long the rafter is. <laughs> we just know that it's the right length. And then we took, it's a pretty neat way to do it. I've never really done it that way. We took an inch and a half off the top because that was when we did the wall. That yep. was the original. That's for the band so, against yeah, the wall. Yeah. This video is brought to you by Keeps, and they've been a longtime sponsor of our YouTube channel, so we really appreciate that. With Keeps, you can get your hair loss medication online. It's delivered right to your door, so you don't have to go down to the doctor's office. You don't have to drive to the pharmacy, and it's about half the price you'd expect to pay at a pharmacy. 
I've been using Keeps personally for about a year and a half or maybe even two years now. I've had great results. I've not only stopped losing hair, but I now have way more hair than I had like two years ago, which is amazing. I would really check it out if you're thinking about it or on the fence. For me, it's been totally worth it. Keeps also has great 24 seven support and it's really easy to use. It only takes me about five seconds a day. Totally easy. If you want to get a special offer, just head to keeps.com slash Perkins. That's keeps.com slash Perkins. And remember hair loss stops with keeps. Thank you keeps for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Your hair is kind of gray. It's getting, it's getting better. Well, you're using keeps. Make sure to use keeps, guys. This square is no good because I can't read it which one it is. Mm, but you need but, a new square, right? But if you can pick up the 412 here, it will tell you on a common rafter what the uh, length is between those points, and you can just measure it out. Yeah, you know, um, instead of having to measure it like across yeah, yeah, that horizontal. What I did, yeah, exactly. Mm. So, and you can do it on the hips and valleys too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's what's on those for whatever pitch. You know, you just go to 412 and those numbers are here, or they're 512, 612, and it goes all the way up. We don't even need tapes anymore. We don't. Except to measure between those marks. <laughs> exactly. One good thing for the homeowner here is we were able to use up a bunch of just crappy kind of boards that were oversized and rip them down and cut them down and use them for like ceiling joists, some of the other parts and pieces so that it did not cost as much as it would have anyway uh, to build this thing. Since it was added on, we didn't know we were building it to the last minute. Oh, All oh, right. man. That was a quick uh, Let's go home. Yeah, we got <laughs> like yeah. I will take this home today. I left it time-lapsing like all night last night <coughs> until the battery died. Forgot it. We're back on this roof this morning and Ray and Jason are making a really fancy cut right here. It's like a Jamie style thing with a double beveled two by eight to match the pitch. I think let's just shoot it. Oh, we got it up here. Yeah. Our homeowner's buying the appliances from kind of a small town kind of place, and they have the appliances already in stock. So they opened the boxes and measured for me where the vents are gonna come through the back of the microwave. So that's the actual one we're using. That's the one they're gonna get. So that's really nice. I have all the tech spec sheet and all yeah. that, and it doesn't really even tell me that. what I'm looking for. So this is really amazing. Also, the dryer is gonna vent directly out of the back so you have wall. a tape measure pulled across the back of it. Yes, I've got a picture of the dryer so I can see exactly where the vent is for it. That's nice. It's super nice. There it is right there. <laughs> no question about it. I can measure it. I can mark it. What I don't want is for them to come in to install. 11 and a half inches. And <laughs> drill right through the middle of the stud. So I'm going to actually do have to box out because there is oh, a stud. There's a stud right there. Centered. I mean, mm. you couldn't make it any more centered than what it is. Um, so that's really helpful for everybody. And I'm going to go work on that right now. I'm not a plumber, but I bet my plumber is going to love that I put this nice giant triple header right over top of his pipe. We got it all boxed in. Oh, look at the fit. Look at the fit. Oh, man. He, he's going to have to drill through that. Well, he can do it. Man, he's got stuff for that, right? Or he could just sawzall like a, like a U-shaped thing. Yeah, if you're really good with a sawzall, you can do that. So this is our box out for the dryer bin. It's gonna go out somewhere right there. Triple flat header because that is a load bearing wall. See that truss? And there's a probably a truss on the roof. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's holding nothing, but <laughs> just to be sure. Yeah, I don't right, think this is a whole debate here. My debate would be that this stud cannot drop at all, even if there's no header. See this stud? Because it's nailed to this rigid sheathing that's also attached to these two studs here that are going to the ground with about 20 nails that if I remember correctly, are probably somewhere near 500 pounds shear strength per nail, something like that. But 
That doesn't count as anything. It's like that does not exist when it comes to the building code. Here, here's the way I do it. If you cut something and it doesn't pinch the blade and nothing moves, then it wasn't <laughs> holding anything. Right. Sort of. Yeah. But maybe it was. Or it might be if there is some sort of live load later. So anyways, this is the whole debate of whether houses are overbuilt now. And if you do solid rigid sheathing on the whole thing and nail it properly and then nail siding nails through all that again, it is way overbuilt and that's okay. Um, for lots of different reasons like wind or snow or storms, it's good to have it overbuilt, I think. But old houses aren't like this. Old houses are light. How many nails were you finding in a lot of members of your, your old houses? Uh, some of the like two by eight floor joists had like one nail in each end. Yep. One big nail. Yep. And that's it. And it's been there for a hundred years. Mm. Who would have thought? We've got our little gable in framed here and we framed it with this framing flat because there's no insulation value needed right here. So that was a little easier. Just went to the bottom of the rafter and we even ripped the R off the zip R. We ripped the half inch foam off and Arlo's gonna use that for something. Got Insulated. And I, got eight. I gotta come up a little bit, Ray. Oh, there we go. Uh, Hey, before you put that up, show me how this works. This beautiful thing you invented. Check this out. Yeah, Ray had this great idea <laughs> to make this jig here. What are you doing? So this is gonna be the same height as that. So we're making a nailer for the soffit. Yep. So instead of leveling over, we just raped out of a great idea to make a jig there and hanging on the rafter there. Yep, you got a line all the way down? Uh, well, enough to, it's all one piece. So. Okay. I like that. Yeah, it's actually Jamie's idea. Oh. Oh, come on, bro! <laughs> they didn't even know that! I know, I know, I know. I just felt like I needed yeah. to say the truth. Finally got my cable so wire. honest. Well, it wasn't like we were Special lying. You did, you did make I it. did make that one You did one make today. it, you just didn't come up with right. the idea. Jay, yeah. you know we forgot? Oh. Uh, we didn't take this out of here. <laughs> We blocked off both ends. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Oh, no. We can get it out. You think so? Bend no. It. No. Saw bend it like half. We might have saw it in half. Bend it like that run? No, you can saw it in half. Freaking $100 board stuck in the attic. <laughs> Put a finger on that. Yep. There we go. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> Heads up. Watch out. <laughs> Look out. It's, it's pretty easy. It is fun, actually, Arlo admits. That's actually fun to do, yep. Back in the day, I used to do that all the time. Almost. Uh, <laughs> that was not it. Uh, that rafter could be bow, though. So what do you got? I got 59 and 3 eighths. Jamie! Yeah, I got 59 and 5 eighths. Does this fly rafter look straight or not? We probably should just go bottom number. It actually, uh, it's kind of bowed out a little bit. Yeah, so go three eighths. Yeah. Three eighths. All right, right. Tell me when it's straight. Uh, yeah. Right there. So. You like it? Okay. Yeah. Coming down to the wire. A couple more sheets, and she's dry. Isn't that nice? It is nice. I mean, Another, that's that's it for framing. I know. Another one in the books. That's what I'm. 
That's why I turned the camera on. Holy moly. <laughs> Wait, are we like going to party this afternoon? Or what's no, that, that never happens. Oh, okay. I think we should call it. What do they <laughs> Wait, do what? somewhere where they finish something and we, they have a party? Yep, yeah, like we talk about out, it every time, but it's out party, right? top out party, never going to happen. Call, I mean, call Cynthia, seven, get her to take seven, us to BCO this I'm afternoon. I'm thinking big bar. Never going to happen. Seven, seven, eight, nope. Hey, but we're done three, framing. <laughs> Extra jalapenos. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> oh man. Did you get that? You tell me you got that. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was going to do it too. I mean, I don't like carrots. <laughs> if it wasn't for the carrot, it was Those carrots great. are good. So Arlo said this is the first top out party he's ever been to in how many years of building? Oh man. 80? Well, no. <laughs> That's just about 50. 50 years, first one. Sorry to let you down. <laughs> They've said tacos. <laughs> 